Thanks for staying with us. For 10 days, Nigeria was in turmoil after 17 soldiers on a peace mission to Okwama Delta State were brutally killed on March 14. The killers beheaded some soldiers and stole their weapons, raising national outrage. The massacre stemmed from a land dispute between Okwama and Okoloba communities. Despite a peace accord brokered by the Delta State government, Okwama youths kidnapped an Okoloba man, leading to a rescue mission by soldiers, which ended in their tragic deaths. Now, accusations between the communities include the, included claims of hired mercenaries and violence. An unnamed militant from Okwama claimed soldiers were manipulated by influential people, leading to the conflict. A former editor argued the issue was tied to illegal oil bunkering, not just a communal clash. Major General Jamal Abdul Salam vowed to recover the stolen arms and arrest the killers, dismissing false narrative. Meanwhile, an ongoing investigation seeks to uncover the full story, revealing deep-rooted tensions and miscommunications in the region. We are jo being joined by Fact Checker, a Center for Journalism, Innovation and Development, in the person of Mr. Philip Anjorin. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, and thank you for having me here today. Mm. Okay, uh, we will just uh, say that you are more or less like a, an eyewitness. You are in the South-South right now, and you must know what the real issues were and where we stand right now. Because a lot of things are flying on the media, social media and the traditional media, uh, what really happened and what the situation in Okwama or Koloba is. Can you bring us up to speed in that regard? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, at first, there were uh, cases of um, communal clashes and um, uh, distrust between the the military, the uh, Okoloba community, and its neighbor, uh, its conflicting neighbor, which is the Okoloba community. However, uh, afterwards, the people they. When the issue happened where the 17 military officers were killed, people knew that, you know, there have been cases like the OD massacre and um, the Zaki um, incidents uh, in the past decade. So the trust level that the people, the community had for the, uh, the military was very low. And as a result, it actually um, impeded the opportunity to like investigate the situation properly. Uh, at the end of the day, people had to like leave the community. The community was deserted, and those who could not desert the community, they like the uh, the brunt of the uh, invasion, local invasion. Because along the line, when the military invaded the community, you know they. They had to like demolish because even though they said that they, it is part of their investigation, because while we were doing our fact checking, we spoke with the, uh, the director of defense media information, that's a major general Edward who told us that uh, the, the, whatever activities they did there was just to investigate. But it really wasn't an investigation. We would call it a personal attack because all the, almost all the buildings there. We demolish. We even had in, we even had um, situations where people were in the buildings that were demolished, like the uh, new Macaulay that we we saw uh, community. So people were demolished, and people were in the building that was demolished. There were cases of um, human rights uh, violation. So basically, it is. It's a case of um, misinformation and uh, information disorder that uh, was part of the conflict and that was complicated conflicts more. Thank you. Okay, uh, misinformation uh, on whose part? Um, is it that the military was the one who that were misinformed or uh, the people were misinformed? First of all, uh, the people were complaining that it was not even what led to the, their killing was not even an investigation. They were being used by a political uh, person or by a rich man or something, and they were doing... It was not a peace 
mission that they went there to do. It was something else. I'm asking this because if it is supposed to be a civil society that uh, you are relating with, it should have been the police. It should have been the people that will go there and investigate whatever it is and broker peace. Why in the first place did it have to be the, the, the army? And what actually were they doing there on the day that... I'm not saying the massacre is a good thing. It's a very, very condemnable thing. But what really was the problem that brought the soldiers in the first place into these communities? So, uh, I come and we do not, we cannot confidently say that uh, we have a reason to justify the army's presence in that situation because naturally when there is a communal clash, so far as it's not uh, multinational, then it ought to be a case of just the police who are meant to ensure uh, law and order but the army were present and um yeah this is nigeria where uh people can just call on the army and do whatever they want even if it is not appropriate but in this case the army were there and um, <clears throat> when the army were there we cannot say that this is what happened even though um eyewitness accounts from the People, uh, the Oko, in the Okoama people, eyewitness account said that uh, the army wanted to take the community leaders to uh, the Bomadi local government, where Okoro community is. So it's, there is this level of mistrust because, one, what's the army doing there? Two, why should, uh, if the army wants, to uh, ensure a peace, a peace conversation between the two communities, why should the army still have to bring the uh, bring the community leaders of Okwama to open up a community? There ought to be a neutral ground for discussion and negotiation, but taking them to Bumadi local government where open up a community is is not really something that we should uh, it's not really something that we can say that we are going to trust full time. So along the line, from what uh, we found out during the um our second round, we went to the community for on site investigation. They said that uh, they said that why after the conflicts where they were um trade of words that stopped the soldiers from taking the community leaders uh, to the attack. They, I think the, the army, they were uh, attacked while on sea. And if you actually look at the situation of things, you realize that uh, when, the, when the soldiers' bodies were found, uh -huh. it was actually found on the shores of Fokado River not on Okwama community itself, which means there is actually a possibility that it didn't even happen in the Okwama community at all. So this, all these um, points, if we actually put them together, you realize that there are cases of uh, conflicts, miscommunication between the army The Oklahoma community. So it affected it. So basically, we, we have to look into the case of, uh, we have to look into how the army handled the situation afterwards. Have you been in the same crime? The people in the Oklahoma community shouldn't have feared whatever would have happened because they would be able to trust the army in, um, yeah. in how they carried out the investigation. So, Okay. That's, that's an issue, really. Yeah, well, now we've been able to uh, establish the fact that um, the outcome of this is uh, almost the um, leveling of Okwama community. But what has been done has been done. The 17 officers have been killed. It's a very bad act. Whether it was done by the Okoloba or the Okwama community, whoever did that should be fished out because you can't take the laws into your hands. To that extent, they were not just killed, they were beheaded as well. It's, it's very... It's very bad, really bad.
condemnable. Uh, but what is the situation of things now? The army is saying there is no exploitation, there is, there are no, the, the presence there is no longer uh, that much, so the people can return their peace in Okwama community. Is that what is obtainable right now? Currently, the army are not physically there, but their, uh, their actress has left an indelible mark on the community. They claim that there is no, uh, they claim there is no reprisal attack, no retaliation, but currently the people are not able to live in their ancestral land, or the churches were demolished, or the houses were demolished, or the buildings were demolished. Even the children could not, uh, the children could no longer attend school. I think the first time the children there had to attend school was probably two weeks ago or thereabout. Hmm. So if they should say that they did not carry out any reprisal attack, how come the community lies in ruin? These are questions we need to ask the armed, the armed forces. How come the community lies in ruin in such a way that the only building that is left standing is the church? And the reason the church is left standing is because while the soldiers were there, they lived in the church. Hmm. They claim to, uh, the army claimed to um, carry out an investigation. An investigation on who? When the old community members are not there. You know, this are questions we need to like, look into. They claim to carry an investigation, but the community members are not there. So if the community members are not there, who are they investigating the work buildings and render the community members to be living in an IDB camp? So mm -hmm. That's the current situation of things. Okay, well, they, they, the, part of the process, the peace process was... Uh, uh, done by the, the governor. He, he waded into the matter and tried to make sure that there will be peace in those communities. But is this peace move also involving rehabilitation of these people, rebuilding of the community of Okwama or any other way that uh, demolition has taken place? Or what, what is the plan? What is the well-being plan for the people who are now homeless in their own ancestral land? Oh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, as of as the um, as of May 2024, uh, the governor promised that he would rebuild the community. It, even though we can't say he's going to rebuild the community, but at least he's going to provide some uh, he's going to provide some resources that would make uh, rehabilitation easier. Currently, they live in IDP camp, um, Ewu Okwama, um, Ewu Okwama, um, Ewu uh, Kingdom. So, the people are living in that IDP camp currently. Uh, they are schooling there as at two weeks ago. But the Okwama community itself, the ancestral land of the community, there the incident actually happened. We are yet to do a rehabilitation projects or not. Even though he promised when um, after the army left the community that uh, even the promise after the army left the community that uh, is going to rebuild the community in three months. So but as of now we are yet to verify if the governors um Carried out and or has even begun any efforts like rehabilitate the community. That's it. Okay, so um, finally, let's just uh, look at what really this topic was about. Um, what role? whether positively or negatively, in fact, negatively, has this misinformation played in the conflict in Okwama? In summary, what can you say about that? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, that much, I I was part of a uh, I was part of a workshop organized by the Center for Journalism, Innovation, and Development (CJID) um, 
information disorder and its contribution to uh, the conflicts in the lecture um, region. So and one of the things we actually learned is that if this information, information disorder generally, if it is not checked early, it is going to complicate any effort to ease tension and um, and um, and encourage uh, appropriate investigation. And as a result, information disorder is going to shift the attention from people who actually committed the crime and place the innocence in arms way. Look at the Okwama incident. Our investigation revealed that the Okwama people did not actually commit this crime. But due to the fact that uh, information disorder is involved in this conflict, the Okwama community were at the short end of the uh, so-called investigation that the, uh, the military carried out. So the moment we, we, we need to um, collaborate generally, society needs to collaborate in scrubbing information disorder when it comes to uh, tackling uh, conflicts. Because if it is not scrubbed, it's going to complicate the investigation and it's also going to uh, make uh, uh, an insight to be in pain. That's, that's exactly what happened in Okwama, and generally that is what always happened because it's going to lead to mistrust between the victim and the uh, the people who are actually doing the investigation. We're not just talking about the army this time around, we're also talking about uh, other forces who may want to like dive into the situation and investigate the case. Look at uh, when the old issue happened, almost all the media organizations in Nigeria we are saying that the army uh, went on a peace mission. Well, a peace mission that involves, a peace mission that is not adequately communicated to the community members who ought to uh, uh, willingly participate in the investigation. That peace mission is not really a peace mission, and that is what led to the, uh, to the uh, unfortunate incidents, basically. Hmm. So that's, that's the issue. OK. So the summary is it's, it's really injurious to our society when we, carry, when we don't fact check everything that goes on. And uh, the social media has given yeah. us a, another, another cause to worry because that is where everybody wants to break the news, whether the facts are there or not. And then we run with these stories uh, without even uh, fact checking. For anybody who is saying it, it will sound really good. But the repercussions are like the ones that we have seen in Okwama community. If these people are innocent, there's a possibility and they have been uh, rendered homeless and some of them i'm sure have been killed and all that then there's a problem and sure. if the soldiers were acting on information that was not supposed to be uh, maybe they didn't have the correct information i don't even know if they were sent from the center or they were just uh, there to do the bidding of someone who could afford to pay their transport fare and uh, logistics and all that then uh, it's a problem so I'm sure this is just a warning for everybody to do the right thing at the right time, fact check before saying what they're supposed to say. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Anjorin, for coming on the show and giving us uh, the true nature of things in the Okwama uh, Koloba conflict uh, today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having us. We'll be talking with Philip Anjorin, fact checker, Center for Journalism, Innovation and Development. We we're looking at the true picture of the Okwama community, uh, what led to it, what the present situation is right now. We're going to take a short break and when we return, we are going to be looking at our second hot topic. But the bottom line is that fact check whatever you want to put out there because the results or the effects of a wrong information or an information disorder might lead to repercussions that we may not be able to, um, to, to handle. That is the bottom line. So let's take that break now and return with our second hot topic. Stay with us.